The summer has been challenging, as we, as we all know, um, and um, the impacts of um, smoke on our populations, particularly up, up the eastern seaboard, have been significant. And what I wanted to do was to um, just introduce you to um, AQFX, which is the smoke forecasting system that we've been developing. This whole system was basically instigated because of the, um, the Black the Black Saturday fires that we had. And one of the outcomes of that was a Royal Commission. What came out of the Royal Commission was a recommendation that the um, Victorian government burn 5% of um, public land as an annual rolling target to try and reduce the risk of catastrophic bushfires. And of course, one of the externalities of that is you have a lot of smoke. And there's been a lot of work done in Australia and across the world, which shows that ambient smoke um, from burning vegetation has health impacts. What came out of um, that initial work was what we called the, the Victorian Smoke Forecasting Project. And um, we need to be able to characterize the different types of fuel. We needed to understand um, what sort of emissions of smoke, particles and gases we would get from burning Victorian vegetation. So we went into the field to make those sorts of measurements and, and I'll briefly go through that. We were then doing numerical forecasting. It's a bit like weather forecasting, except on top of it, we we're also doing smoke forecasting. And all of that information then goes into the state control center for decision making. So numerical forecasting means that what we're really doing is we're, we're, we're solving the equations of um, energy and mass conservation and, and uh, chemical reactions to then simulate what we think is going on in the atmosphere with the smoke. So we, we're simulating the, uh, the, the fire propagation behaviour and then um, simulating the smoke emissions from the fires and then simulating those emissions being transported in the winds, the meteorology that come from the, the Bureau of Meteorology weather forecasts and the chemical reactions of the smoke as it goes along and then the impacts down at ground level. So it's all done with computer software which describes mathematical algorithms of what is going on. The system that we built, AQFX, was divided into three tiers. And the first tier gave us a three to six day forecast ahead. And in addition to providing a specific value for each location, uh, we also provided an uncertainty. Because the further out you go in time, the more um, uncertainty your forecasts have. So you have to build that in, to, um, in into the forecast that you have. The tier two forecasting is where we actually look at uh, you know, one, one to three days and, and here we're now explicitly modelling all of the emissions that lead to high concentrations of pollution. And then the third tier of the forecasting is where we work very closely with DELP and the State Control Centre in planning prescribed burning for the following day. And we advise them as to where we think the smoke will go from any of those planned burns for the following day. Anecdotally, we, we, we generally did quite well with, with the large scale fires. You know, in fact, the forecasting system AQFX was running for the whole of Australia. Um, and so we were able to um, show in the forecast the transport of um, the smoke from the fires up and down the eastern seaboard, sort of connecting all the major regions. It's early days, but, but on the whole, we, we um, did quite well in, in forecasting the events. Um, there may have been some occasions where we didn't get the fire emissions right, for example, where we'd had some rain go through and... Um, that may have quenched the fires more in our forecasting than was observed in reality. Um, but that's okay. I mean, that's something we'll now go away and look at and learn from and improve um, just to cover us in case this ever happens again. What I wanted to do now then was look under the hood of AQFX. So it does these forecasts, you know, 24, 74 hours. And where it really starts is fuel maps. So, you know, what's the vegetation that's going to be burned? You know, what's its, what's its moisture? What's its behavior when you actually burn it? And that feeds through into the fire behavior modeling. So how will the fire propagate during the course of a day or, or a few days? And then given how that fire is behaving, what are the emissions of smoke that come from that fire over time and how do they vary over that time of the order of hours through to um, a few days? And so that's the smoke composition because we want to know how many particles are coming out, how many fine particles that people can breathe in. One of the challenges, of course, is um, you, you have the, the flaming component of the fire as that's moving along on the fire front. 
and um, you have a lot of smoke emissions from that. And of course, if it's very hot, um, the, the smoke emissions go very high and in fact may not impact the local communities and, um, and, and the local people. But then behind that, you have um, a lot of the, the, the thicker wood components, the coarse woody debris, as, as we like to call it, which smoulders away for days and days. And um, that's smouldering away. It's not so hot. The smoke tends to hug the ground a lot more. And um, so that has the impact to, uh, the, well, the potential to impact on communities for quite a number of days. But it does raise the question, um, so why are we modelling that entire region if our focus at the moment is on Victoria? So this is a simulation for um, January 2006. It's got smoke in there, windblown dust, sea salt aerosol, and also particles that form from emissions of some gases from trees. The yellow components are windblown dust, the red is um, smoke going gradually brown as it ages. Um, you occasionally see purple pop up, which is from the vegetation, and, and the blue is the sea salt aerosol. And the information to take from this is that the smoke and the particles travel very, very long distances. When we're thinking about the impact of um, fires in Victoria, we actually need to think about that impact with all of the other sources across Australia because pollution doesn't see state boundaries and territory boundaries. It goes straight across them and that long range transport, as we call it, can have a significant um, impact on, on what we're seeing locally. Going then from forecasting how uh, the fires actually behave, we've done a whole lot of work on um, what are the emissions of the pollution from those fires. And that can be done by either people going very close to the fires or using instruments that um, um, send a beam of light across the fire itself. We're also very interested in, well, how much heat is generated by the fires? So AQFX is based on all of these sorts of fundamental observations. And one of the things that's come out of that work is that some of the most significant emissions come from smouldering combustion. So this second component um, in some ways is maybe even more important than, than the high level flaming emissions, of course, depending upon the size of the fire. And so we've done a lot of work in measuring the particle emissions from this particular source of um, smoke, the smouldering combustion, as we say, and that goes into the forecasting models. We know that um, from um, studies that have been done overseas and in Australia that the longer term health impacts can be um, uh, cancers, um, uh, the increase in, in risk of mortality um, for cardiovascular um, issues, um, for um, asthmatics, um, for, you know, for, for, for anyone really who's sort of at risk with um, cardiovascular type, type issues. And that risk can increase with the length of exposure so short term, um, short term exposure, we'll find that you know, most people will, will recover from that. Um, long term exposure, if it was over the course of a year or more, then we, we start to see you know, relatively high um, risks. And then that intermediate period where it may run for a few months, it's less clear at this stage as to what the long term effects will be. We've had things like the Hazelwood um, mine fire where we had you know, sort of intermediate periods of exposure and some of the studies um, coming from that are showing that there are ongoing health effects. So it's an area for research. And my final slide really relates to um, AQFX and, and the summer fires that we've just had. So we have this system, as which you've seen, we've primarily built it up to look at prescribed burns, but we've also had that capability of looking at large-scale bushfires. And it has been strongly tested over these, these last few months at the Australia scale, um, with a particular focus on the eastern seaboard. It stood up quite well. We're now um, planning to do a very detailed evaluation of its performance and look at where we can improve things, where they need to be improved, then look at you know, what else needs to be added into the system to further increase its robustness over time. And so that's work that's currently in progress. We're working in an area where we're, we're very much doing public good research. Um, and you know where we're trying to protect our population, and you know trying to bring in the best science and <clears throat> work with the the best um, um, agencies to to ensure that this goes out. And so we had this close relationship with the bureau, who are running the system operationally, and we 
also have close relationships with university sector um, who often do the, the underlying research that will feed into the work that we're doing. So I think that's very important. And the fact that we are able to work with communities um, through the STEM programs and through the use of the low-cost sensors um, strongly adds to what we're doing and um, you know it ends up becoming a whole of community, both the research and, and the population community um, piece of work which which has the ultimate target of protecting everybody from uh, smoke.